Joining us now, Strive Asset Management CEO and Chief Investment Officer, Matt Cole. So, Matt, uh, good morning to you. Thanks for coming into the studio. Uh, what are you expecting? We have a lot of data this week, and obviously the Fed uh, is going to be the big event for Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I agree with Nick that there's no expectations for a cut here, but but that's the direction that we're going. And you're seeing that in some bullishness in Treasury data over the last several weeks, several months. And I think that that continues. The the two-year looks to have topped. I think it it stays top, probably moves down a little bit. And and same for the 10 years. I think fixed income looks good when it transfers to the equity markets. I think equity markets as a whole look pretty range bound, but within equity markets, I think small caps look pretty good. Okay. So, so we talked about that, I think a week or two ago, we were talking about if there was going to be a rotation, uh, Mark, Mark, you were not with us, but I'd love to get your thoughts on this as well, uh, that we're going to see a rotation out of technology and into small caps. Mm-hmm. And, and that rotation has been long awaited and it keeps yeah. feeling like it, like it gets delayed, it gets delayed, it gets delayed. Mm-hmm. Right. But I do think from a relative value perspective, small caps look good, at least for the next few months. But broader speaking, I think markets look to move higher over the over the longer term being six to 12 months. We're pretty constructive on on equities as a whole, even further out the risk spectrum. Cryptocurrencies, I think, move higher. Ultimately, you know, the, the elections will play a big role of that. But but even regardless, I mean, I think crypto was a great example. You saw the Bitcoin conference this weekend where and President Trump basically gave the crypto markets everything they could have asked for with regards to what he would look for for regulation. And then you see Kamala Harris quickly respond that she's trying to reset relations. I think ultimately on that side, it's more fundamentally broken. But regardless, that's pretty good news for the crypto industry over the next it's year. It's interesting. What do you make of that, Mark? Um, look, I think... Trump's endorsement of of Bitcoin overall, I think that was very bullish for crypto. I mean, you have a former president of the United States who may be the next president of the United States talking about how fantastic Bitcoin is, how we are going to become the world superpower as it relates to Bitcoin. I, I think that's fantastic. But as it relates to this great rotation we've seen out of semiconductors, out of tech into small caps, the biggest issue I have with that right now is the, the, the December 2025 SOFR rate is pricing in like six rate cuts. And that is not something that happens outside of a recession typically. And when 44% of small cap companies are profitless, it seems to be setting the stage for some disappointment in small caps right. down the road. Can I add to that in the, on this rotation into small caps? Exactly that. Are we talking that lower interest rates help companies that generally have more leverage? Or are we talking about actually a good demand outlook? Because I think Mark's right. Everything talks about deceleration, which is not good for small companies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think on the small cap side, that's more of a a short term trade with equities looking range bound and small caps doing well. But over a six, 12 month plus period, I do think it's equities higher as a whole tech higher and crypto ultimately higher. We do have uh, we're getting McDonald's out about maybe 40 minutes or so from now. Uh, We're we're also getting Starbucks after the bell tomorrow. Uh, Boeing is Wednesday, Chevron, Exxon Mobil. And then you've got obviously a lot of the technology companies. We've got Microsoft. That's tomorrow night. Meta Platforms on Wednesday, Amazon and Apple Thursday. Uh, And we've been talking about this this rotation out of big tech, which has kind of been hurting the Nasdaq 100. Uh, you know, we're, we're down eight eight percent in just over two weeks. So I think that's one issue which you've kind of already addressed. But just in general, I mean, how are you feeling about earnings so, so mm-hmm. far? Yeah, I think earnings are are fine. I, I, I'm I'm not super worried about it. If you look at as an example, you, you mentioned Exxon, and if you look at oil, oil's been very range bound right about at the 200 week moving average. I think that's a very constructive place to be adding to risk and energies. We're we're very long-term bullish on energy markets, but with regards to earnings in and of itself, I think they'll be fine. I don't think they're gonna be anything that's gonna drastically change the markets one way or the other. We haven't seen that happen too much. Before you go, I do wanna ask you about your company because you've raised 30 million in Series B funding and you're gonna launch this new wealth management fund. and that's going to it's what's interesting, though, is it specializes in non woke anti ESG investing, which a lot of investors are interested in. Yeah. What investors care about is making money at the end of the day. Right. For, forget the, the woke stuff, the ESG stuff, the DEI stuff. And I think what we've seen is that 
when a company implements DEI, that can quickly result in a material risk to the company. And, and customers don't like that, investors don't like that. So Strive started as an asset manager. We've quickly got to 1.6 billion of assets. Our Series B that we just completed will allow us to expand into wealth management because there's a big issue there where Customers around the, co the country have been having their investments forced into places like BlackRock. What do they want? They want excellence. They want innovation. They want meritocracy. They want capitalism. And so that's what we're going to deliver. And we expect our wealth management offering also to be a national brand and one of the most crypto forward, crypto integrated wealth managers in the country. Because right. at the end of the day, I do believe that cryptocurrencies have a place in the portfolio of most citizens, probably in the neighborhood of a 3 to 5% uh, allocation at the portfolio level. And so some, that's something that we look to bring to the masses. Matt Cole, thank you so much for coming in and uh, come back soon. Thanks for having All me. All right, great insight from you.